Hello, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about programming inside of game worlds. And I don't mean scripting for mods or so on, but literally using game world mechanics to do your programming. To demo this, I'm going to use Robot Odyssey from the 80s, as well as Minecraft Redstone. Uh, other things such as Factorio could possibly also be used. Anyway, I had a deal back in when I was growing up playing this game with my dad that if we beat the game, then he would buy us any other video games he wanted. When I did beat it, I chose Their Finest Hour, The Battle of Britain, because it had 3D graphics. You know, for a demo today, we're going to be using this ScanLime Robot Odyssey Rewired, fantastic work over here on GitHub, where they have brought this game available to use in modern web browsers using WebAssembly and other technologies. And also online, you can find manuals for Robot Odyssey, which might be useful to, for you if you want to get into the game. Also, if you want to get into the game, there's these Odyssey training sessions you can go through and learn about how the game works. Or you can again, go play the game, where your job is to escape from the underground city of Robotropolis. Watch out for that invisible minefield on level 4. It's a doozy. For now, we're going to use the Innovation Lab, which is the sandbox mode of Robot Odyssey. And we have a computer chip here, which I'll demo later, as well as three robots. You also get these three, three robots at the beginning of the game, although they have pre-wired circuits in those cases. Uh, just show how things work here. Notice I can control with the mouse. If you click, normally in the original game, you'd have, you've been using the keyboard, but this mouse control is really handy, available in Robot Odyssey Rewired. Anyway, I can grab any uh, certain things, including robots. I can go inside of robots, and I can nest robots arbitrarily deep. Handy for carrying them all around together when you're wandering around uh, manually in the game. Anyway, uh, the next thing I want to look at though is the toolbox. It's default over here in this next screen. You can press T to open and close it. And in fact, in any old uh, screen in the game, if you press T, it will come to you. To drop and pick things up, you press space bar or the mouse button. I'm going to demo here flip flops, nodes, which play, split your signal into multiple directions, and gates and not gates. We also have available OR gates and exclusive OR gates, which I'm not going to demo at this time. Press T to close the toolbox. Now, in Innovation Lab, but not in the actual game, I can press H to turn hot, which will let me control signals to some extent. I also need to have the remote control on, which is the R button, that uh, in order to actually have any circuits flow and make the robots do anything. So if I press H again to be hot and R for the remote control on, then I can activate these things. So I go to the input of that flip-flop, it changes where the output went. This becomes this form of memory so that we can remember past events. Again, this node is splits the signal in multiple different directions. If we go to the input, both outputs turn on. Or to the AND gate, if I turn on either input, nothing happens to the output. I have to go over both of them. They both have to be on for the AND gate to have the output turn on. The NOT gate is always on by default, but if I put an input signal on, then it flips over to being off on the output. Anyway, I'll turn back off with R and H, and I'll use T to open up my toolbox again, and I'm going to drop off everything but the NOT gate for now. Back in the toolbox to clean up. I'll grab this NOT gate, and I'll go inside my robot here. Now, inside the robot, we have thrusters and bumpers on each side. We also have antenna input and output, grabber input and output. We have a battery that can be recharged with energy crystals. We have a power switch for each individual robot to turn on and off. And we also have a periscope. If we go inside the periscope, this allows us to write inside of a robot while looking at what's happening on in the world outside of it. And you can see which robot you're inside of by which one has a periscope sitting out. Anyway, if you press S to turn into a soldering pin, which does work inside of the game because you need to wire things up in the game you can wire circuits together. So now, and I can press C to switch back to cursor mode. Now I will have always an active signal going to the left thruster. If I turn on the remote control, we can see that activated there. Now, if I want to go look outside the periscope and turn back on the remote control, we'll see that we're now going to the right, which is sort of boring because we see the bumper turned on over here uh, when we hit the right-hand side, but nothing's listening to it. Okay. So anyway, we'd like to do something a little more interesting and see we can see the signal coming in from the right-hand bumper. We do a little more interesting by say, let's pretend, let's go down, for example, uh, whenever uh, we hit the right bumper. Let's bring the toolbox here with T, open it up with T, and actually we don't even need that yet. All we need is to wire this right bumper to the down thruster and turn back on the remote control and we see 
that the robot goes down whenever we hit the right bumper, which lets us move around a little more. A little more. Although it's not quite as interesting as it could be because we don't bounce back and forth. That'd be awesome uh, if we can keep track of whether we hit top or bottom most recently and go that direction. So let's come over here and switch back to cursor, turn off the remote control, and I'm going to carry us over to the maze which is in the Innovation Lab. Now in this maze, you can go to paintbrush mode with a P, and you can draw new walls or erase walls with clicking or space. But I'm not going to leave it in its default form, so I'm just going to have it like this. Go back to cursor mode. Now I'm going to wire up a little bit fancier circuit, and this circuit is actually one of the circuits that one of the robots starts with in the game itself. I'm going to need a flip-flop, a node, and two AND gates for this little program here. This visual program in our visual programming language of pseudo-electronic circuitry. Put the flip-flop in the middle for organizational purposes. In visual languages, all of a sudden it matters where things are in 2D space as opposed to the uh, linear flow from top to bottom of textual languages. Okay, so we want to keep track of whenever we hit the right bumper. So we only want to have things actively happening if we're hitting the right bumper. And we want that because otherwise, we could, for example, we could be wasting our battery moving around for no good reason, for example. And then meanwhile, beyond that, if we ever hit uh, the top bumper, uh, let's let go this direction, we want to remember it. For going, oops, I accidentally left my robot. For going down, if we ever the top bumper. And if we ever hit the bottom bumper, we want to remember it for going up by activating the bottom thruster. So if I wire this up correctly, then what we should see happening is a flipping flop back and forth. Whatever we hit most recently will go up or down, but only if the right bumper is also active at the same time. So let me turn on the remote control and see if this works as expected. So far, so good. Very nice. Sweet. So that's acting like we want it to, and we could get through this maze with the up and down uh, walls blocking us all the way until we get to the right hand side. Now there's another cool thing inside of Robot Odyssey, being such a nice game as it is, is we have these computer chips that allow us to put logic inside of a block and therefore clean up our circuitry. There's also a number of built-in circuits, uh, chips already designed that you can use in the game that come with it. So in this case though, we're going to decide which of these are inputs and which of these are outputs based on how we use them. And we're going to replicate the exact same circuit we just had previously inside of a chip to show what it would look like using it. And again, we can choose which ones act which way in this case. It depends on how we wire them up when we're done, how they end up behaving. But we're going to wire them up in a fashion that looks sort of like the actual robot, so things look and stay clean for our current needs. Let me get this toolbox out of the way. So we're going to treat this one over here as for soldering pin, remember? We're going to treat this one as the right bumper. We're going to treat this as the bottom thruster. We're going to treat this as the left thruster. And you can document these things if you want to, but otherwise you have to remember in your head what's what when you're doing a chip. This job like variable names, for example. And we're going to say that the top thruster uh, will be uh, well active if we most recently hit the top bumper. And we're going to treat this one over here as the top bumper. And the bottom thruster will be active if we most recently hit the bottom bumper. And in both cases, we need to be the, have the right bumper be active in order to do anything. So if I've coded this up correctly here, we can use this as an equivalent to the circuit we had inside of the previous robot. Get a little bit prettier here, but it's in the middle. Okay. Now once I have a ro uh, chip here, and notice actually that I now have these uh, outputs and inputs indicated based on how I've wired it up internally. I'm going to grab this chip and take it to the burner room where I can burn a small version of the chip. Like I said, there's a number of pre-designed chips that you can also load up over these chips if you want to. Click this button to burn it, 
And if I wired it correctly, it should act just like our previous circuit did. I take it inside of my white robot over here. They might have names, but I forget what they are. Anyway, switch back to S for soldering pin. And now oh, it'll look prettier if I do it a different way. Let's do it this way to make it prettier. Wire these things up according to the original design. Like I said, you can document it if you want to keep track of it better. But this based on my memory at the moment of which one needs to go where based on what I know is inside this chip. And I come out here and turn both these robots on at the same time. If I wire them up correctly, they should both behave in the same fashion. One with the circuitry directly into the robot and the other one with it nested inside of a chip. Let's see how it goes. Very nice. Looks like one was already going down and one was going up. They'll catch up to each other, but their behavior is just the same. Uh, again, one using direct circuitry and one using a chip, and those chips become handy things. And again, you can put chips inside of chips as well. Anyway, before I move on to Minecraft, I also want to look a little bit, little bit about how that robot program or circuit might have looked if we were using a textual language instead. For this, I have used JavaScript, although I have a pseudo API since I haven't actually implemented any kind of this robot uh, uh, you know, as an actual library or game or anything. But we can imagine that on each step of the game world, we have always a left thruster on, and we're going to look at the top and bottom bumpers and remember which one in an outside variable was most recently active. Now we can see, are we hitting a right bumper? And if so, we'll see if the, we have a particular bumper activated and if as the most recent one. And if so, we'll activate the corresponding thruster. And it's interesting again to think about how this sort of we think of linear from top to bottom in these textual languages, for example, although we definitely have less of an obvious uh, Let's have an obvious flow in terms of top to bottom, and this, instead we have this 2D layout in this visual language. Now, moving on to Minecraft, we're not going to be talking about mods or commands, but we're going to be talking about programming within the game world, which means Redstone. Uh, Red or Dust was first released in the Secret Friday 3 release of July 3rd, 2010, and was vastly expanded in the Redstone update in 2013. And what's interesting about redstone is that you have to work from a little bit lower level to create the kind of gates that you had out of the box in Robot Odyssey. But I don't know Minecraft as well as my son Sam, so he's going to take over for this part of the demo. Alright, so in Minecraft you can make crazy stuff like a computer. That's ridiculous, obviously. Like No one has time for that, except for this person, apparently. And you can also be like, this massive stuff, but... I don't have that kind of time on hands, so I'm going to go over here to Minecraft and look at AND gates, NOT gates, and flip flops. So if you only have one on, the signal doesn't go through, doesn't go through. But when you have them both on, the signal goes through and that turns on. The NOT gate, just turn that on and the signal turns off, it just inverts the signal. And flip flop. When you put an input on, when you send a signal to it, it switches. And so you can combine all these things to open and close a door. So say you have one on, the door doesn't open. The other one on, doesn't open. You have both of them. If you have both of them on, then it opens because you also have two flip flops over here. The signal goes from each of those buttons, from one of the buttons to open this one, another one to open the, to turn on that one. The signal goes from there to an AND gate like the one we have over there, and to a NOT gate so that it opens and closes the door. Now clearly the circuit design in Robot Odyssey or Minecraft has some inspiration from real world logical electronic circuits that are built on transistors and real world phenomena. Because in the real world we actually have to tie our language to something actually physical that can actually occur. And maybe we'll have a chance to discuss this more in the future. Bye y'all.